Find Marijuana Today daily on iTunes today and let us know how we're doing with a rating and review. It's a quick and easy way to help us grow our audience. Just search for the term marijuana. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, February 23rd, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 438 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is courtesy of our buddy Tom Angel over at Marijuana Moments, who picked up on a recent study published yesterday in the journal Addiction that suggests that states with legal medical marijuana do not have a higher rate of teen marijuana use than states without. The review study led by researchers at Columbia University looked at 11 previously published studies dealing with adolescent cannabis use and medical marijuana laws and found that teen usage rates in medical marijuana states stayed flat as those laws changed over to more progressive forms. One of the favorite go-to arguments for prohibitionists is that marijuana legalization, even medical, will lead to skyrocketing teen usage rates. That study, as many others before have done, nicely puts another arrow into that line of thought. The Cannabis has a good piece up looking at the large amount of resources being expended by the alcohol giant Constellation Brands, best known for their Corona line of beer, into the legal marijuana industry. We've reported a lot on the storyline of Constellation spending $200 million Canadian to buy a large chunk of industry leader Canopy Growth Corporation, an investment that on Wednesday was explained as being part of a larger strategy to catch the early trend of cannabis drinks by the company's COO and President Bill Newlands who presented to a group of investors in New York City. Although edible and drinkable marijuana products are not yet legal in Canada, most industry watchers, as well as the company itself, see that as a wall that will fall within the next few years. And when it does, Constellation plans on being ready to deploy. This is a good story to open up in full. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Our final top story of the day is an update on a storyline that's been bouncing around our top picks all week, and that's the situation in Ohio, where a snafu over the scoring of marijuana cultivation applicants continues to roil the state's nascent industry. On Wednesday, Ohio State Senator Bill Cauley introduced a bill that would halt the process of issuing cultivation licenses to the first 24 companies selected until a number of problems are cleared up, specifically questions over how applicants were scored. As we've touched on earlier, one of the companies that was denied a license was just told that it should have actually been awarded one, but hadn't due to some human error in the scoring process. It's not clear yet how that dispute will be resolved after the state said they will not be stripping licensing from any of the 24 companies initially announced as winners. State Senator Colley's bill would force the halting of the process and give State Auditor David Yost 30 days to complete an audit of the process and then another 30 days to implement changes recommended from the audit. This is a dense one with plenty of backstory, so probably not a bad one to open up as well. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly show, Marijuana Today, and our popular email newsletter, the MJ Today Media Newsfeed. Our advertising calendar for 2018 is filling up fast, so if you have a legal cannabis business that could benefit from reaching the best audience in the industry, you need to email advertising at mjtodaydaily.com to secure your place in line. You don't want to miss out on the best marketing opportunity in legal marijuana just because you acted too late. Our always strong traffic is even stronger now that California has joined the ranks of fully legal states. So there isn't a better time to sign up as a sponsor than today. Tomorrow might be too late. One last time, that's advertising at mjtodaymedia.com. All right, time for the Blitz. 
The Oregon Liquor Control Commission just announced the results of their latest round of ID check sting operations on marijuana dispensaries. And while the results were better than the last round, there were still plenty of shops in the state that were happy to sell cannabis to someone without the proper ID. The OLCC sent teams into a total of 70 dispensaries this time and busted eight for failing to properly check the age of its agents. The OLCC recently increased the fines and penalties associated with failing an IT check so that first offenders are hit with a 30-day loss of business license and a $5,000 fine. The Associated Press put together an interesting story about legal actions taken by the candy company Hershey's against legal marijuana companies it's accused of infringing on its trademarks. As legal cannabis continues to normalize and previously not-so-legal knockoff brands enter into fully legal markets, the holders of the trademarks those knockoff brands are imitating are increasingly coming a-calling with legal papers in hand. We've reported on the case of the Gorilla Glue Company shutting down a cannabis strain company with the same name. This time, it's Hershey's that went after Harborside Collective for selling Jolly Meds, a Jolly Rancher knockoff infused with cannabis. Harborside, which has a well-earned reputation for not backing down from legal fights, sent their own lawyer into the fray and was able to get the candy company to back down. This is a good one to open up in full. One of the new features recently installed in the Las Vegas airport will allow out-of-state visitors the chance to toss their leftover legal cannabis into a so-called amnesty box, which has been bolted down and secured to prevent thrifty Las Vegans from bin diving. No word on whose job it is to actually empty it. The New York Times is a great story up that looks at the life of one Virgil Grant, who has spent just under a decade of his life in prison for various marijuana crimes and who, in the 80s and 90s, sold a lot of cannabis out of his Compton, California grocery store, including to customers like noted rappers Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Thankfully, Mr. Grant's story is a positive one, and today he's the owner of three licensed legal California marijuana dispensaries. While his hometown of Compton has imposed a moratorium on allowing legal cannabis shops from opening, Mr. Virgil said he's been hard at work to overturn that. Pop over to this one for the full dive in. There's a pretty funny situation developing in Colorado with an upcoming music festival scheduled to kick off on April 20th in Denver called the Mile High Block Party and their stated policy that fans not use cannabis while attending. The festival's website states, quote, no public consumption of cannabis products allowed on festival grounds, unquote. It's just a good reminder that we still have a lot of work left to purge the insanity of cannabis prohibition from society, even in the Mile High State. With another good reminder of that fact is the decision made yesterday by the Orange County Fair Board to ban marijuana-related events from being held at the Costa Mesa Fairgrounds. The board voted by a count of 5-0 to zero in favor of the ban. And finally for today, Georgia's most well-known pro-medical marijuana state lawmaker has announced that he will not be running for office when his current term is up. Republican State Representative Alan Peek has been featured here on this podcast lots for both his political work in pushing for legal medical marijuana, as well as his direct activism, which includes procuring out-of-state cannabis oil for Georgia patients in need. Representative Peek has served in his current capacity for 12 years now and says he looks forward to working as an advocate for medical marijuana patients. We wish him the best of luck and thank him for all the work he's done. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again Monday morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser strengths of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.